the three big networks, that would be ABC, CBS, and NBC, they spent 77% of their evening coverage on Tuesday on President Trump's news conference. That number came from this man, Media Research Center's Brent Bozell. Brent, that was a huge news event. And I'm not at all surprised that the broadcast network spent all of that time covering it. I have never seen a shouting match between the President of the United States and the press corps. I think it was worthy of that kind of coverage. Was it worthy of 100% of coverage from CBS, where, according to CBS, that was more important than anything else, and it needed 100% coverage? If that was true, Stuart, then the stuff that Fox was reporting shouldn't have been top of the news, shouldn't have been reported because it was more important stuff. What did Fox report that they thought was also newsworthy along with this? They reported that, that, that hardliners in, in uh, Iran were saying that they were going to renege on the deal and have an even more dangerous nuclear program against the United States. There was also an itsy bitsy item where North Korea blinked in its threat to drop a nuclear bomb on the United States. According to CBS, that's not news. Okay, I take your point, but I'm not surprised that 77% of the time was spent on that wild, wild press conference. I'm not surprised about that. But tell me this, when President Trump came out in Trump Tower to make the statement, it was supposed to be about the infrastructure plan. That's it, get back in the ele elevators and go. Instead, he stayed and was baited by the media. Do you think that when that was all done, he got back into the elevator and said, oh dear, I wish I hadn't done that. Do you think he said that? Golly, Stuart, that's such a good question. I <laughs> don't know what's going on inside this man's head. You said it perfectly, baited. They know they can bait him. Um, you know, some, some person you can, one person you can never bait, and then they really never tried, was Barack Obama. Yep. Uh, you couldn't bait Ronald Reagan. Um, th these people know how not to be baited. It takes nothing, to, apparently, to get under Donald Trump's skin. Um, and he has to understand, you know, that there's, a, there's an audience of, of you know, 150 million people uh, that is reading or watching watching or listening to those words that he's making. So I do think he hurts his case, and there's no question about it. There is a time and a place to do this, but my goodness, to do it every single time. There is Trump fatigue, and you're seeing it in the polls. You know, Brent, you're joining a long list of people on this program who basically fundamentally support President Trump's program, but are telling him, please, Mr. President, stop shooting yourself in the foot. These are self-inflicted wounds, and you've joined a long list of critics right there. I'll I'm not surprised, it's but a, you're doing it. But, it's, but Stuart, it's so easy. It's so easy. What he should have done, it was what everybody's saying, and he should have done and the first time out is condemn the neo-Nazis by name, and et cetera, et cetera. And then he should have said, but we're going to have another conversation, folks, and it's going to be a national conversation about the hatred that's going across both sides, all across the spectrum. And we're going to have that conversation at its proper time. Time. Do you and think that should have been a week from now. Do you think he's learned the lesson? I mean, I hate to say that about the president. Also, have you learned your lesson? But has he learned how to play politics? Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking at the tweets today where he's lashing out at everybody. Um, he's lashing out at people he, he's going to need in the future. I don't know. You know, he is, he is, he is uh, uh, ever more on an island, and he's going to have, you know, the poll show, he's got that one quarter of the American population that is willing to go off a cliff with him. Uh, but he needs more than a quarter of the population yep. to get okay. things done. Brent, it's always a pleasure having you on the show, and I'm sorry we're cutting it short. I hate to do that, but you're a good man, and you'll be back. Is that okay? Thank you, Stuart. <laughs> yes, sir.